G'day everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today I'm going to be going over the history and the evolution of the Australian rules football rule changes throughout the years from the beginning in 1858 to the current AFL in 2022. Now I'm not going to be going over every single rule change that has been made but I'm going to be going over most of them and in particular the significant ones that have changed the game the way we see it today. Also quickly before we do get into it I'd like to thank Why Do I Like for giving me this really good video idea. It all traced back to 1858 when Australian rules football was originated by Tom Wills who originally wanted a sport to keep cricketers fit during the winter. Trial matches back then were very different from the game we know today. For example, games featured two 40-a-side teams and would last for an unlimited amount of time if necessary as the first side to score two goals would end up being the winner. A game between Scotch College and Melbourne Grammar School lasted two Saturdays and ended in a draw with only two goals being scored throughout the entirety of the game. However, in May of 1859, the first 10 laws were written for the game of Australian rules football. Some of the significant rules that were made included the confirmation in ground dimensions, a goal would be awarded if it travelled through the post without touching a teammate or opponent, a player catching the ball from a kick will be awarded a mark and will be able to take a free kick, the ball is unable to be lifted from the ground and can only be taken in hand when caught from a kick. Games would still only end once a team is first to score two goals, however teams now consist of just 20 players. A year later in 1860, tripping, pushing and hacking were no longer permitted and captains were meant to monitor play if there were no umpires present. In 1866, a huge array of rules were changed with major updates to the field dimensions and scoring system proposed. These included the max playing area which was changed to 182 metres long by 136.5 metres wide, the pair of goal posts to be 6.5 metres wide at an unlimited limited height, there is a 4.5 metre protected area introduced after a mark or free kick, teams would have to change ends after each goal, players must bounce the ball every 9 or 18 metres, the appointment of an umpire became mandatory and a time limit was put in place as the team who scored the most goals would be awarded the winner. 1869, the first time limit of 100 minutes was set. 1872 saw the addition of the first ball up as previously a scrimmage would continue until someone has won the ball. In 1874, teams would change ends for the first time and would have to do so at each of the half-time breaks as previously a kick from the centre was put in place. Unbelievably, back then it was actually required to immediately drop the ball after being tackled rather than to dispose of it, which in today's game is obviously not allowed. Shortly, just three years later in 1877, a major rewrite occurred and included more changes to the game. For example, a size 2 rugby ball had to be used throughout all matches, a ball was not allowed to be handed to a teammate, and it also saw the introduction of goal umpires. In 1886, matches now consisted of four 25-minute quarters rather than just two 50-minute halves, and then just a year later in 1887, the introduction of timekeepers and the bell system was added. Field umpires also were required to bounce the ball up at the start of each quarter instead of throwing it up. The same year also saw the introduction of goal umpire flags as well as the reduction of the distance between the behind and goal posts from 18.2 metres to 9.1 metres. The minimum distance for a ball to travel to be claimed a mark was remarkably just 1.8 metres as well. The next major rule change was then seen in 1891 where centre bounces would happen after every goal rather than just the start of every quarter. As well as that, the goalpost distance decreased again from 9.1 metres to 6.4 metres. Ahead of the start of the Victorian Football League, more changes were made to the rules, most notably to how the scoring system worked. Behinds were introduced into the game and were worth one point, with goals being worth six points. Previously, goals were only awarded one point, being the only form of scoring in the game. The little mark was also abolished, which was essentially what handballing was back in 1897. Then in 1899, in which still stands today, the number of players on a field at any given time was decreased from 20 to just 18. In 1904, boundary umpires were introduced for the first time. However, back then, they punched the ball back into play rather than throwing it in. The VFL introduced fines in 1906 to the clubs if they were not ready to play by 3pm as late starts were common before back at the time. For the 1908 semi-final, a change was added which was the introduction of a 4.5 metre square in the centre of the ground. No player was permitted within 2 metres of the ball until it touched the ground in a ruck contest. However, in 1910, that was changed to a 2.4 metre circle instead. It was also the year in which boundary umpires threw the ball back into play rather than punching it. It was then 14 years later in 1924 where a significant rule change was put in place and this made it so only one person can stand on the mark as previously multiple players were allowed to stand on the mark. In 1925, free kicks were now awarded against a player who forced the ball out of bounds and the handball rule was updated 
meaning that the ball had to be punched, not just struck. But then in 1934, the rule was changed back again, so players were able to use the flick pass again. In 1930, the game saw the first edition of a 19th man. However, unlike interchanges we see now, once replaced, a player can no longer return it back onto the field. Again in the same year, the holding the ball rule was reinforced again, so that it was no longer permitted to drop the ball. Strangely enough, it was changed almost right away, only to be changed back to the way we know it in 1939. In 1939, frees were no longer given to players who kicked the ball out of bounds, and then six years later in 1945, the introduction of downfield free kicks became prominent. One year later in 1946, the introduction of a second reserve player was added for the first time. However, these players could not come back onto the field once they were replaced. Also in the same year, the siren as we know today replaced the bell at the MCG and later at all grounds in 1950. Runners and trainers were able to be utilised for the first time in 1955 and umpires replaced handkerchiefs instead of using whistles, which is something I had absolutely no idea about. In 1960, new balls were able to be used in each quarter if conditions were poor and four years later in 1964, coaches were allowed to deliver messages for the first time on the ground during quarter breaks. It was also the first time where goalposts became fitted with padding, as it is much safer at preventing serious collision injuries. After dying out the last couple of decades, the flick pass finally became an illegal form of disposal in 1966, and in order to handball now, it must be with a clenched fist. 1969 saw quite a significant change in which players received a free kick if the opposition player kicked the ball out on the full. The centre diamond was then introduced in 1973, with only four players from each team allowed in it during the centre bounces. However, it was changed in 1975 to the centre square with it being 50 metres in length. The second edition of a field umpire was then introduced in 1976, and in 1978, the interchange system was put in place for the first time, which was a replacement of the reserve system. A significant change in how far you could run with the ball was adopted in 1981, as you were now allowed to run 15 metres instead of 10 metres with the ball before having to bounce it. 1986 then saw the introduction of the famous 50 metre arc, and video investigations for on-field misconduct was also introduced. In 1988, another significant change saw the then 15 metre penalty replaced by a 50 metre penalty. This was a sufficient change, as 15 metres wasn't a harsh enough penalty and only resulted in time-wasting tactics. 1994 then saw a major change in relation to the playing time, as it was reduced from 25 minutes with time on to 20 minutes with time on, which is obviously what we still see today. Now obviously that change saw a bit of a decrease in scoring, however it wasn't as prominent as the decrease in scoring that we are seeing at the moment. 1994 also saw the addition of a third field umpire, boundary umpire and interchange player. A year later in 1995, players were now allowed to play on from kicking out from the goal square by kicking the ball to themselves. Then in 1996, players who had prior opportunity now must immediately dispose of the ball once they were tackled. A fourth interchange player was now introduced in 1998 in hopes to speed up the game which brought the amount of fielded team players up to 18. As we fast forward into the 21st century, the first notable rule change saw the minimum distance for a kick increase from 10 to 15 metres. In 2003, the introduction of a deliberate penalty was given to Ruckman tapping the ball out on the full during a ruck contest. A minor change to the size of the centre square was seen in 2004 where it was increased from 45 metres to 50 metres, and then in 2005, a 10 metre outer circle was added where Ruckman were meant to be positioned. In 2006, players were allowed to have a set shot directly in front of goal if they took a mark or were awarded a free kick in the goal square. In 2008, a fourth boundary umpire was included, and then three years later in 2011, the substitute rule was added, which led to there being three interchange players and one sub. Another addition that was added that year was putting stricter inflictions on the deliberate rule, meaning that you can't concede a behind if you're not under pressure. Previously, teams would purposely concede behinds to gain free possession, which was notorious in the 2008 Grand Final. 2012 then saw the introduction of goal line technology, which made it much easier to determine the correct score decision. In 2016, teams now had 90 rotations a game instead of 120, which also meant that the substitution rule was abolished. It also implemented a 30-second countdown clock on the scoreboard screens to make it easier for players and supporters to know how much time they have left to take their shot. In 2019, the 666 rule was introduced in where six players had to start in the back 50, six in the forward 50, and six must be in the square and the wings before the centre bounce. It was aimed to reduce flooding, free up more space, and increase scoring. However, upon reflection, it hasn't really 
really achieved any of that. Players also no longer had to kick the ball to themselves when playing on from a kick-in. Instead, they are freely able to run past the goal square if they want to take a kick out. Fast forward to 2021 and interchanges again are reduced from 90 to 75, as well as the medical sub being introduced, which is similar to what the substitution rule was back in the day. However, it can only be used if a player was injured and had to be off the ground. An injury that's likely to mean the player is going to miss the following week. Another rule implemented in 2021 was that players were now required to stand on the mark and were not allowed to move laterally or run towards the mark. Again, it was another rule added to try and help speed up the play. However, just like the 666 rule, it didn't really come to fruition, nor did it seem to add any significance, as for many people it caused more downfall than improvements to the game. Well, there we have it. The complete evolution of Australian football rules from its inception to what it currently is now. Let me know if you enjoyed it, and if you did, leave a like and subscribe for heaps more footy content in the future. Let me know what rule change you thought was the most significant in changing the game, as well as what rule changes you thought was the worst. I'll see you guys all soon in my next video. Have a good one.